Hello, so we're going to do an integral, the integral of e to the x times cos x. And I'm going to give it a name, and here it's really important to give it a name because you'll, you'll see it will help us in our evaluation of this integral. In mathematics, you should always give things names. When you give things names, then you can have some control over them, is an old saying in mathematics. Now, we've got to think about what techniques we're going to use. This, again, is not a standard integral. It's a product of two functions, e to the x cos x. It's not an integral that I immediately know or can write down. Nor is it one that I can really guess the answer to. So we think, into our, we think about what tools we have. We have substitution and integration by parts. They're our two main tools that we're doing, dealing with, with in integrals that we don't instantly recognise. Well, substitution probably is not going to do us much good here, but integration by parts will be a very useful thing to do because I've got the product of two functions and so I can use parts. It, in some cases, it does matter which, which, um, which parts you choose. In this one, it doesn't really matter a great deal. So I'm probably going to call, I might call this one u and that dv dx. It doesn't really matter in this problem greatly. So I like to sort of over the side here to write down what I'm doing. I'm going to put u equal to e to the x, and I'm going to put dv dx equals cos x. And then underneath, I differentiate this one, and I integrate this one. Now, if you don't like learning off formulas, some people do, some people don't. The integration by parts formula is, it's the integral of u dv dx is uv minus the integral of v du dx or something. Uh, so if you don't like learning formulas, if you like learning patterns, if you set it out in this way, here's a nice little uh, mnemonic way of remembering the pattern. I just do that times that minus the integral of that times that. Just a little pattern, just if you don't like learning off the formulas, that's all it is. So the integral i then is equal to uv, so I multiply those together, that's e to the x sine x, minus the integral of v du dx, so that's e to the x sine x dx. Well, at this stage you might say, well, hang on a minute, you, <laughs> you started off with the integral of e to the x cos x, and now you've got the integral of e to the x sine x. It looks just as hard as what you started with. You've taken a problem and really rewritten it into something that looks just about as difficult as what you started with, perhaps even more complicated. However, have faith. I'm going to try using parts again. I'm going to try using parts again in the hope that something nice and sensible comes out of it. Now, I said in the first bit, it didn't matter which way you chose the parts, so I chose that way. It does matter now which way I choose the parts. You might like to experiment. If I choose the parts the wrong way around in this part of the integral, you try this and everything will cancel out and you'll get nothing. You might like to try that interesting exercise. So because I chose u to be e to the x up here, I'm going to be consistent down here, and I'm going to put uh, u equals, again, e to the x, and dv dx is equal to sine x. And then du dx, I differentiate that is again, e to the x, and v is minus cos x. And again, so I can say my integral then is, I copy down the first term, that's e to the x sine x minus, now I do that one times that one. So that's minus, minus e to the x cos x. And then I get minus the integral of that times that. So the two minuses will give me a uh, plus. I've got to be careful with the signs here. I get a minus here. I get a minus from the formula, and another minus there gives me three minuses. So that's minus uh, integral e to the x cos x dx. So just watch the signs very carefully there with that. Well, I'm going to tidy up just a little bit. So this is e to the x. Might factor out here, I think. So I get sine x plus cos x. And this is minus the integral of e to the x cos x dx. And now you should be saying, well, hang on, what have you done? You've gone around in circles because you've got back to where you started from. I got back to the integral I started from, e to the x cos x, but there's a nice minus sign here. 
So if I write this symbolically, that means the integral I started with is e to the x times sine x plus cos x, but minus the integral I started with. And that's very clever because I can take that i on the other side and divide by 2. It's sort of like bootstrapping the problem. You end up back to where you start from, but there's a nice minus just where you want it. So therefore, twice the integral that you started with is e to the x times sine x plus cos x. So I can divide by 2 and get a half e to the x sine x plus cos x. And I better put um, a plus c should go in somewhere, probably at um, this stage here. I'll put a plus c in, and there's the plus c. By the way, of course, you can check your answer. And that's also a nice exercise to do. Differentiate this. Better get you back to where you started from. So there's a nice way of checking. Take the derivative of this uh, function and you should get back to where you start from, e to the x cos x. Now, of course, having, having seen this, you should now have a go yourself at doing the integral of e to the x times sine x. And you'll see a similar process happening. So that's a nice one for you to practice with. Mm -hmm.